Hi, my name is Jeff Denworth. I'm CMO and co-founder of Vast Data. I'd like to thank you for spending a few minutes to learn a little bit more about Vast's disaggregated and shared everything storage architecture that we call DAYS. To start, I'd like to first explain how we kind of viewed the storage industry as we founded the company. And basically the best way to represent how we saw customers managing data was to draw a pyramid. For the last 20 to 30 years, customers have been trained or instructed to think that they need to manage their data across a series of systems that provide a spectrum of capabilities where customers have always had to choose between performance and capacity. At the top of the pyramid, you have your fastest storage systems that you can buy, powering your most important applications. And then as you go down the pyramid, there's a series of other um, larger and lower cost systems from a dollar per gigabyte perspective that ultimately you use to kind of age your data down into as it grows older and older. And the challenge here for organizations has been, well, how do I manage the different tiers of infrastructure? How do I move data back and forth between these different tiers of systems? But more importantly, as you kind of think about the modern application era, and as people start to adopt new machine learning and big data technology, the value of data has kind of changed over time. And if you think about that transaction processing movement that I mentioned earlier, if you record a credit card transaction, as that, as that ages over time, it becomes less and less valuable to an organization. But in the age of analytics and in the age of machine learning, what happens is the aggregate of data gets more and more valuable as you start to combine a lot of different data points together that can be exposed to big data analytics technologies or artificial intelligence um, different applications. And so what happens is that as customers start to rethink their um, application agenda by kind of constraining their data into the slowest storage systems that they've been buying for the last 20 years, essentially constrains their ability to get value from information. And so the first challenge that we kind of thought about is how can you democratize fast access to all of your data? And the second thing we started to think about was, well, how do people build scale out systems that can essentially um, support the needs of all of the data that customers are storing and looking to analyze? And here, we found ourselves studying an architecture that was created by Google 20 years ago called the Google File System. The Google File System, when the white paper was released, basically created a renaissance in systems infrastructure where customers moved from dual controller storage systems to commodity servers that would have direct attached hard drives at the time. Now you have a mix of hard drives and SSDs that customers deploy in what's called a shared nothing architecture. Now these shared nothing systems were designed to solve for the hundreds of terabytes problems that organizations like Google were facing 20 years ago. Um, but as time has evolved, the challenges of these architectures start to get more and more acute. First, as um, hard drives and SSDs continue to get larger, you're talking about hundreds of terabytes that you would keep in each of these nodes. Second is, as you start to think about each of these nodes having some representation of a namespace, well, as you're writing into these systems, uh, what happens is that all of these nodes need to stay in close coordination. And as you scale them up, you have a law of diminishing returns because you're just updating too many different aspects of the system over time. And that's why most storage clusters can only support a few dozen to a few hundred nodes. And we took a step back and said, well, how can you build something that solves for all of these challenges? And so we created a new type of systems architecture that we call DAYS. And it starts with a modern data center fabric. NVMe over fabrics is a new storage protocol that was deployed and can be deployed on standard commodity, ethernet, and InfiniBand networks. The nice thing about NVMe over fabrics is it provides essentially the same levels of direct attached storage performance that you'd get with that shared nothing architecture. But now you can start to build large collections of storage clusters where each CPU can be stateless. The CPUs run the software and expose the data to the different applications that you're talking about. We think about these CPUs more like cattle 
than pets. We build all software in Docker containers. Uh, and these, these vast containers essentially all have shared access to SSDs, NVMe SSDs that live on the other side of this NVMe fabric. And you can build extremely large clusters out of this shared flash. And so once you move to this new systems architecture, a lot of things change versus that shared nothing approach that I mentioned earlier. The first is when nodes fail, you don't care about rebuilding tons of data because each of them is totally stateless. Where the SSDs live, you have a series of JBOFs, J-B-O-F, that uh, has zero single point of failure. So now when servers fail, you're not rebuilding any data. Each of these containers becomes a essentially isolated and independent unit of performance that can be scaled into your environment. Imagine a system that you can have 10,000 containers within a single environment, and you could have hundreds of thousands of NVMe SSDs within a single storage cluster. Everything scales to data center scale proportions thanks to NVMe over fabrics networking. Oops. And so um, then if you think about this, this type of systems architecture, because each CPU is stateless, what you don't have is that classic cache coherency problem that I mentioned earlier. So there's no cache in the system, which means that you have no communication across these clusters. Each is operating completely independently in the synchronous write or read path. And so there you have no law of diminishing returns. Everything scales linearly. And the question then becomes, what can be done new to solve for the cost of infrastructure such that customers can afford scalable all flash for all of their data? And here, the day's architecture also pays a very significant benefit because each of these CPUs can run a new class of global efficiency algorithms, all intended on delivering an entirely new economic profile for flash ownership. It starts with the it basically espousing to very low cost flash and, and delivering a system that can make use of the most commodity lowest cost flash for up to a decade. And here we've created this new capability called Foresight. Foresight. And what Foresight enables is intelligent data placement and right shaping of data as it goes into this flash. And what you get out of that is 10 years of longevity out of the lowest cost flash that you can buy in the marketplace. So now customers afford a full refresh event and we manage everything very dynamically such that you can have even multiple generations of flash within a common cluster. So now you can avoid, avoid things like forklift refreshes and large scale migration events. All of that goes away and you think about this as just this infinitely scalable flash cluster. Number two, there's a new type of error correction codes that we call locally decodable codes. These locally decodable codes only have 2.7% overhead for 60 million years of mean time to data loss. So now you have an unbelievably strong error correction algorithm that gets applied to protecting your data from SSD failure and things like this, but you also pay virtually nothing for storage overhead for data protection. These locally decodable codes are uh, ultimately optimized for scalable clusters and could even protect against full JBOD failures. And what comes of this is uh, a customer's ability to just get a lot more free space from their flash investment, while at the same time getting much stronger data protection from uh, the occasional SSD failure. Now, the last thing is arguably the most interesting, which is a new form of data reduction. And customers ask us, well, is it compression? Is it deduplication? And it's arguably neither, but it is a combination of the best of both of these approaches. It's a mechanism that goes all the way across your data, all the way across your files, all the way across your objects as uh, a deduplication engine would work but the granularity of pattern matching is far more fine-grained than what you'd ever get with deduplication and looks more like what you'd find with compression. We call this similarity. And so similarity is a new form of data reduction where we basically have the ability to look across a series of independent data objects all the way across the system. And so let's say each of these has their own independent differences or, or deltas, 
uh, and these are files. So you can look across all the files and as opposed to chunking things up into reasonably large blocks and expecting that um, these blocks would deduplicate as you do with classic deduplication engines, rather what we do is we extract the deltas at byte levels of granularity into a new approach where you just have to store the unique blocks and their deltas at any level of granularity. And so what happens is even when customers are storing pre-compressed and pre-deduplicated data into our system, you find additional levels of savings thanks to this new global fine grain approach that we've created called similarity. And so when you put it all together, a very interesting effect happens is you kind of think about the past, I don't know, 20 to 30 years of storage infrastructure, customers have had to wrestle with that, that value and capacity equation with respect to performance. And now with VAST, all of that goes away, where you have a single tier of infrastructure that's scalable enough for all of your data, is performant enough for even your most demanding applications, and it's affordable enough such that you no longer need to worry about storage tiering whatsoever. We invite you to learn more about this by visiting us at www.vastdata.com. There's so much more that we have to tell. Just visit us there and you can learn more. Thank you.